chapter 2, lesson 2.7, activity 2 for populations and resources, you really need to start with the um, chapter question. So the chapter 2 question was, what could have caused the births to increase or the deaths to decrease in the moon jelly population? So that's what we were looking at doing in this activity. We're trying to show that, and you're going to be using two tools that are um, attached to this screen. You'll be turning the modeling tools into Google Classroom. So we have the increasing birth modeling tool and the decreasing deaths modeling tool. So you'll get those out of uh, this slide here in Google Classroom on the Google Slides. And uh, you're going to be kind of using it in a similar way that we did in Chapter 1. So I believe it was Chapter 1, Lesson 1.4 that we saw something like this. And we ended up with our chapter question, what could have caused the size of the moon jelly populations to increase? And we had two possible claims by the end of chapter one. Claim one, a change to the zooplankton population caused births to increase in the moon jelly population. So, and it's identified here or shown. Remember there was a graph before 2000, we would have had the same number of jellyfish to die as the same number of births, two were born. So because the population died and gave birth about at the same rate, the population was steady before 2000. After 2000, uh, it shows that the population had about two deaths for every three births. So that means that we have many more births than we have deaths, so that causes the population to increase. So that was claim one. Um, they're saying it's because the zoo popu zooplankton population, uh, that was why we had this change. In claim two, it says a change to the sea turtle population caused the deaths to decrease in the moon jelly population. So you could imagine that we have uh, more sea turtles, so there's more sea turtles eating the sea, the uh, moon jellies, so they're gonna be more dying. And they represented it over here before 2000, we have about the same number of deaths, the two X's, as births, the two B's. But after 2000, we don't have as many uh, deaths as we have births. Because there's fewer deaths, that means we're going to have a population increase. So that's claim two. Remember, that was caused by the sea turtles. Remember when we look at our uh, glacier seafood web, uh, we're, we're focusing in on these moon jellies. The one claim was that the zooplankton increased and that caused the population of moon jellies to increase. The other is that the sea, pop, the sea turtle population uh, increased and that caused the moon, or sorry, uh, yeah, and caused the moon jellies to increase. Okay, so um, as you go on, your Amplify work. Um, has some instructions. It has the graph that we were referring to in these charts. It was pretty much stable until about 2000 for the population of moon jellies, and it was increasing after 2000. It asks you to investigate this question. What could have caused the births to increase or the deaths to decrease in the moon jelly population? So we're getting this population increase because of one of those two factors, one of those two claims. So uh, your goal is to show a change in the zooplan zooplankton population could have caused births to increase in the moon jelly population. So on page one of activity two, this is our goal with our modeling tool, to show that if we had zooplankton population increase, that could cause the births to increase in the moon jelly population. Okay. So when you're using your modeling tool, um, you are just writing X's and B's. There's a little key down here. So if the uh, organism gives a birth, then we'd have a B. If the organism uh, dies, we have an X. Okay, so we want to show what happens to the organisms. And here at the top, it says the population in the stable ecosystem. So this was before 2000. The zooplankton population, about the same births births be as deaths, so the population would be stable, and that would cause the moon jellies to have about the same amount of food, so they had about the same number of deaths as births. Okay, remember the X's are deaths and the B's are births. Um, they would add some, you should add some dots going across here, 
to represent that the energy is going from the zooplankton to the moon jelly population. In the populations during the moon jelly population increase, so that second part of the graph where it was climbing steeply, uh, we would need to write some X's and B's. And if we're going to have the moon jelly population increase, the starting amount for the zoo pop zooplankton population uh, is still here, but we're going to need to write some X's for the ones that die. And according to the claim, we're going to have uh, the zooplankton population have more births than deaths because it's going to be increasing. So we might have 1x and 2b's, or you might have 2x's and 3b's. Just want to make sure that your b's are more common than your x's. Uh, and that will allow the energy to move across. So those are those dots. And then the moon jelly population will have a similar thing. It's going to have more uh, births, more Bs than Xs. So you might have one X and two Bs, or you might have uh, two Xs and three Bs. Just need to make sure that the Bs are greater. So that's how you're going to use this modeling tool uh, for the first page. And in the second page, we're going to be looking at the decreasing claim. So it's to show how a change to the C turtle population could have caused deaths to decrease in the moon jelly population. So we have our stable population. The moon jelly population uh, is stable. They have about the same number of deaths as births. The energy molecules go to the leatherback turtle population. So there should be some dots coming across this. And you can use notability to add your lettering. And it shows that the leatherback turtle population deaths and births are about the same. So their population is stable. But after 2000, population during the moon jelly explosion, uh, we would have to show that the moon jellies are increasing. So it would have fewer X's than B's. So as long as you have more B's than X's, because the X's are deaths than births, we'll be OK. You'll have the dots coming across. And the leatherback turtle population, according to this, they said um, could be eating less. So that probably means that there's going to be less leatherback turtles. So maybe they're going to have more X's than B's. So they're going to have more deaths than births. So that could be a change. So you'll want to decide how you're going to draw them out. Just remember that you're just using X's and B's and adding the dots and the arrows. Um, you, you can do this on notability. For each of these graphs, the increasing um, birth and the decreasing. Uh, just make sure that you add your copy back into Google Classroom so you get credit for this activity. Okay, so remember that both documents are available um, on the slide and you can add them to Notability and then turn them into Google Classroom. Thank you.